So after a busy few months, I'm finally back making my way through a huge back catalogue of games I've yet to review. And in today's video, we're looking at Sucker Punch Production stroke Sony's Ghost of Tsushima. Now you're likely to be aware this game already has been extremely well received and won lots of awards. But let's find out why according to our 10 pillars of gaming. This is Ghost of Tsushima. Should I buy it? As always, before we begin, I find it important to note that this review is from a PS4 playthrough. Therefore, any footage captured is not representative of next gen. However, the other elements of the review are still relevant. The story. Sony games often boast an impressive story. They very rarely put their name to something which just doesn't have a captivating plotline. Think Heavy Rain, The Last of Us, God of War to name a few, and Ghost of Tsushima follows suit. Without ruining the plot, you play as Jin Sakai, a respected samurai warrior who has to fight to save his homeland of Tsushima from foreign invaders. I am Jin Sakai, nephew. Lord Shimura. What I loved about this story is the in-depth nature of emotions that it explores. With the game being set during wartime, the plot really nails the strain that it has on the local people and the environment, something which I sometimes feel is lacking in video games. It also has a very believable plot. Sometimes the narrative in games can feel forced in order to make the game work from a gameplay point of view. In this game, Jin's journey feels real, challenging, and rewarding. Every RPG game allows for character progression and development, and I can't say I've ever experienced a game which does it quite as well as Ghost of Tsushima. I'm not just talking about leveling up or acquiring new perks. The whole character arc from Jin is beautifully crafted together. As for the ending, it was strong and provided a tricky moral decision to make. The bad news, for me, the game didn't really have enough decision making aside from the end one. I'm a gamer who relishes those tough, stressful decisions and I feel there were more opportunities to include this during the game. Also, the story was slightly predictable. That's not to say there wasn't twists and turns because there were, but the twists that arrived I kind of saw coming a little bit. That said, the story is brilliant and was fully captivating from start to finish. If Sucker Punch Productions had been slightly more daring, this could have been a perfect score. Instead, it scores a 9. Setting The game is set on the island of Shushima, a real-life island near Japan in the year of 1274. Great year. As I said previously, the game is set during wartime and this is obviously reflected within the world. Most structures you come across have been burnt down and the map is littered with dead bodies and piles of rubble. In truth, it, it's a really bleak and depressing world, but that's not a bad thing. It's perfect for the game's narrative. Amongst the death, ruin and depression, the game also showcases so much beauty. From stunningly vivid coloured trees and forestry areas to huge impressive castles and fortresses, shrines and hot springs can be found in number around the world which allows your character to level up. You can also enjoy moments of reflection where you can compose your own haikus in certain areas of beauty. Something which maybe doesn't sound that interesting but really is when you get into it. The map is broken into three areas which correlates to a certain act in the story. Within each area, the climate changes somewhat, but besides that, there's not a huge difference. On the whole, the setting paints a wonderful picture of depression, destruction and violence, whilst also blending in some real beauty, nature and spirituality. 9. Characters Unlike most games in this category, there isn't a huge abundance of characters. Jin Sakai is our controllable character and I'd probably say there's around six other characters who I'd class as supporting. Because of the world being somewhat bare and underpopulated, such as the nature of a small island during wartime, how Jin was as a character was really important. What you won't get with Jin is humour. He's fairly monotone in delivery and very focused on his task, which is fine. 
As much as I love a charismatic and witty protagonist, in some games it can feel a little bit odd, like the developers have chucked it in just because they think that's what us gamers want. Jin is a guy who has experienced hardship, a lot of it, and he's watching his hometown be torn apart by foreign invaders. Why would he crack a joke? I actually found it really refreshing to see such a straight talking and focused character. What Jin does so well is deliver emotion. Many times there are scenes which tug at the heartstrings for all manner of reasons, and Jin delivers this in a sincere and believable way. As voice acting performances go, it's right up there from Daisuke Shuji. Sincere apologies if I'm pronouncing that wrong. There must be thousands of them. The supporting characters all have a lot of depth and each feature their very own story arc told via a hefty side story strand. In a similar view to Jin, they have all experienced hardship and are really well thought out characters. Finally, a good game needs a good villain, and Cotton Khan, who leads the invaders, is superb. He's brutal and cunning in equal measure and makes a great antagonist. 8.5 Gameplay The game has a heavy focus on combat, infusing stealth and standard combat styles. A lot of people have likened this game to the combat of Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed franchise, and I can kind of see that. It's certainly more like the original Assassin's Creed than the new hack and slash style. Think Brotherhood, but so much more better. For me, this game boasts the most complete and fresh combat mechanics that I have ever experienced. This now has to be the bar for sword based combat in video games. Every single time I spotted an enemy, I dismounted from my horse and slashed them all down with a huge grin on my face. It can feel slightly clunky to begin with, but once you evolve your skills and develop new techniques, it becomes so fluid. What I love most about it is that there are so many approaches to killing an enemy. When infiltrating an enemy camp, you're presented with so many options which you can tailor to your fighting style. Also, thanks to the narrative, stealth or brash front-on combat feels immersive. Sometimes in stealth games, I feel wrong when I fight an opponent front on. If I do that in Assassin's Creed, for example, I feel like I'm playing the game wrong, but you don't get that feeling here. As for the other elements, horse riding is really strong, perhaps only being rivaled by Red Dead Redemption 2, but not by much. Parkour is fresh, but also challenging enough to think about, and there's no control over dialogue, much seems to be the way in Sony published games, but the script and acting is so strong it didn't seem an issue. One point I will make is that when you start the game, you're going to feel very staggered as there's a huge amount of cutscenes within the first two hours, sometimes separated by just 10 seconds of gameplay. It can feel odd, but stick with it. Once you're in the game, it feels much more fluid. There's not much of a crafting element in the game, but you can improve your armor and change the design of your weapons. A nice touch. Because of the combat alone being so good, this game scores a 9.5. Visuals. What you can see here is captured on PlayStation 4. Much like what I said about Sony at the start in terms of story, they very rarely put their name to a game which isn't beautiful. And Ghost of Tsushima certainly is that. It's a very dark world, as I've mentioned within the setting category, but if anything, that makes the beautiful aspect stand out even more. A lot of times when playing, I stopped and took in the scenery, and if you're someone who likes to take screenshots in game, there's going to be plenty of opportunities. Starting with the free roaming visuals, blood and combat gore are really rewarding and superbly done. The first time I poisoned an enemy and watched him violently vomit blood before curling up into a ball and slowly dying was beautifully shocking. Also, the standoff feature, which allows you to challenge opponents in a duel-like style fight, can provide some brutal animations, which include your opponents being sliced in half like a slice of bread. Beautiful. Little details are also really impressive, with blood remaining on your katana until you wipe it off, footprints remaining on the ground as you walk, something which should be a given in 2021, but as we all know, it isn't, and the wind, which acts as a really clever way to provide a waypoint, is really good and immersive. 
The cutscenes are wonderfully crafted as we so often see in these Sony published games. Face details are spot on, blood and sweat clear to see and overall has a very movie like feel to it. Visuals score an 8.5. Bugs. As the last game that I reviewed on my channel was Cyberpunk 2077, this category is much shorter in this video. It's not a buggy game and on the whole it's relatively clean. There was the odd gameplay or visual glitch as you can see here, a glitch which had me laughing for a, a good 10 minutes or so. The only story affecting bug I experienced was occasionally when clearing out an enemy camp. It would say that I couldn't free the prisoners because enemies were still near when in fact they were not as they were all dead. It's easily fixable by quickly fast traveling away and then returning to the scene. It was annoying, but it only happened twice. 7. Length I'd say this game is spot on in terms of its duration. Reports will vary, but it took me around 25 hours to complete the main story, which for me is a decent length. If you're going to be running around collecting all the artifacts and bathing in every hot spring, then it's going to maybe push the 50 to 60 hour mark. Whatever length your play is, the important thing is that it doesn't feel long. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't devastated when the game ended, it just felt like the right time to reach its conclusion. Plus, the game can be continued post main story and also in New Game Plus, allowing you to collect everything that you haven't yet acquired whenever you like. A 9. Fun. By now, you should know, this game is the nuts. On combat alone, it's so, so fun. The story is heavy and can be pretty harrowing, so sometimes, depending on my mood, I just loaded up the game and hunted a few collectibles or cleared out a few enemy camps. Whatever you're feeling, the game provides fun. Sure, it's not happy clappy fun, it's depressing, dark, wartime, murdery fun, but fun is fun, right? 9. Replayability. Would you play this game again? Eventually, yes. It's certainly not one that I'll be clamoring to play again within the next year. Not because it's not a good game, because it clearly is, but there's not much that you can do differently on your second play. Sure, there's the one decision at the end of the game which will very slightly affect your ending, but beside that, your experience will be exactly the same. That said, the story is absolutely good enough to come back and experience again. If you played The Last of Us multiple times, for example, then you'll do the same with this. 6. Value As always, I review this category on its current price as I speak. It may be different at your time of watching, but hopefully you can gauge the right range. Currently, it's at £45 stroke $60, which isn't too far from its launch price. And for me, rightly so. I firmly believe that this game goes into the category of games that you must play, alongside Skyrim, The Last of Us, and The Witcher 3, to name a few. So yes, that price is absolutely value. And to make it better, it will likely drop over time, but for the current price of a stunning narrative combined with some of the freshest gameplay of the modern era, yes, it's value. Nine. So there you have it, truly a brilliant and remarkable game. People had told me it was good, but I still didn't quite expect this masterpiece. Well done to Sucker Punch Productions and well done to the superb cast. For more reviews and other gaming videos, please hit subscribe.